Hi, this is Brian Hawkins, Next Step Survival, and I want, today I want to do a video that I've been meaning to do for a while, how to start a prepper pantry. So behind me is our prepper pantry. It's nothing but a 12 by 12 room that we've put racks around and added food over the years, and it's grown pretty nicely. And I want to go back to the beginning, when we first started, knowing what I know today, and how to start from scratch, right? So it's not that difficult. It seems like it at the beginning, or at least it did for me. I made it very complicated in my mind. It really isn't. So I'm going to, and actually I've already done this, but I'm going to take food from my pantry, not even going to go to the store, and set it all out, which it's set out now. And I'm going to take take those items and put them on the, uh, some empty shelves, which is my bookcase over here. I've cleared it out, and uh, I'm just going to put the items on there one at a time, show you what I got, and then... At the end, we'll be able to look and see what the entire two weeks for two people, three meals a day, looks like. So, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so before we go over and start putting things on the shelf, I just wanted to cover a quick couple of things. So we all eat differently, so we're obviously we're going to all prep differently, right? So I try to take a, a wide range of products or food off of my shelves to give everybody some ideas. You may not like, or somebody in your family may not like some of these particular items. Just substitute those with what you generally eat, because that's what we want to do, okay? We want to store what we eat and eat what we store. That's important so we will rotate our food. And that's the other thing I want to bring up. We want to rotate our food. So we want to use this as a, I call it a living pantry, but I, I know a lot of people call it a working pantry. So let's go with the working pantry. Um, we do that throughout this thing. So, I, you know, other than some of this stuff here, like this expensive stuff that you can't buy right now, we're not using that, to be honest. I mean, every now and then we'll grab a can, but... For the most part, we're, we're taking things off our shelves back here and shopping out of our pantry and replacing those items. That's a whole different video. And once you get to that stage, you can do that as well. But even with a two-week supply, you want to use that food and replace that food. So when you go shopping and you've taken two cans of mixed vegetables or something off your shelf, you replace those that, those two cans. And then you put those newer cans in the back and bring the older ones forward. And that's the way we rotate. And that gets also, that helps with the expiration dates, right? So there's there's really no expiration date on, I don't think on anything that I may have put there. I don't think there is. So it's all best buy dates. I won't go into the whole, all the details on, you know, like a can of, meat or something is good indefinitely even the government says that so the united states government anyway i'm not going to go into all of that but we don't have to because we're going to rotate our food so um and we'll get into that in other videos and i do like to write the dates with a sharpie you can do this if you don't if you'd like to or not this just helps me with my food rotation so if I do need to rotate some food, I know when, what, what's the oldest product and, and what to grab first. And um, it's, in my opinion, it's good to start that right up front. You probably don't need it with two weeks of food. But if you can continue to build on that and it go beyond the two weeks, which I've already got a blog post on that. If you're going to go beyond the two weeks, it's, it's a good habit to get into because... Things get really complicated when you've got a whole room full of food. And you just you just want to get into that habit, in my opinion. And I think that's it. I think I think we're done with the boring stuff. So let's get on to the good stuff. Uh, I'm going to take you over there, and we're going to start stocking our shelf. Again, two weeks of food for two people, three meals a day. All right? So if you got a bigger family, just, you know, just like a recipe. Just alter it. Okay, let's start uh, with breakfast. How's that? So here's the shelves. These are four shelves. I don't think you can see them all right now just because of the angle of the camera. But 
Breakfast is fun and easy. So, uh, cream, cream of wheat. When we're storing something, we also, we also want to pay attention to what's required to make that, right? So, with I'm just going to give this one example here. With cream of wheat, it is, and maybe I won't. So, okay. Milk or water. So, you need milk or water. So, we're going to have plenty of water, and we may even have some milk. We'll figure that out. But cream, a box of cream of wheat. This is probably good for, I don't know, for two people. That might be two weeks. I don't know. If it's not, how about some complete pancake mix? I like the Aunt Jemima. They, I guess they quit making this or changed the brand or something. I don't know. I think there's another one, um, Hungry Jack or something. I'm not sure. I, I've seen it now. I've forgotten. But it says complete. Just add water. So no eggs and milk and all that stuff required. So that's one of the reasons I like this for, for the pantry. And I have a bunch of this. And I have some of this put away for long-term food storage as well. But that's for another day. So we'll put that up there. And obviously we want some butter. Or not butter. Um, syrup. With that, let's put up some syrup. My shelf's not long enough up there. Now there's clearly over two weeks, right? So I'm not going to put this up here, but maybe you would rather have oatmeal. All right, so just to give you another option, I thought I was going to do that, but there's clearly two weeks for two people, more than enough up there. So I'm not going to throw this big old box, but maybe you would rather have oatmeal. And no, I'm not going to let you forget your coffee. So maybe you like freeze-dried, maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. It just, you know, whatever... Um, I like to use a, a French press and there's no, you know, if you can heat water, you can have coffee. There's breakfast. Also, if you like a different type of coffee, you don't want instant. At this point, it really doesn't matter. And tea. You can just get tea. Whatever you want. Just another option. Breakfast, two weeks, two people, plenty of food, uh, a little bit of variety. We're not eating the same thing every single day. And that's kind of the point of this whole exercise as well. All right, let's move on to lunches now. So, this is going to re represent two weeks. So, um, half a can for each person. This is for my wife and I again. So, if you need more food, whatever, just, just build that in. But so, And I'm going to add some more stuff to this so you'll see that's not while we're eating. But for, say, Sunday, week one, Sunday, week two. See how it's going to go? So we have... That won't fit up there. That's nice. So there's, say, Sunday. And will these fit? Yep. Monday. And it's Monday and Monday, right? Week one, week two. See how we're doing that? There's Wednesday. So basically we're going to have 14 cans for two people for two weeks. We really like these. Campbell's Chunky. I don't know about, again, we're not talking about health here, but they're, they taste per, they taste amazing. So um, if you have a Meyer in your area, every now and then Meyer will put these on sale. 10 for 10 and 11th one for free. So you're getting 11 cans of this for... Um, Ten dollars. We usually buy a couple cases of that at a time. Right. And Friday, let's switch it up a little bit and get some beef stew in it. All right. So it's just gonna fall. And then another variety of the chunky for the last day of the week. Saturday. There's our soups and our main entree for our lunches. Now let's start adding a little bit of variety to it. We can have some stovetop stuffing. Again, this is just some ideas for you. Here's some more. Maybe we want some bread and a, some carbs, right? So some baking mix. Here's some cornbread. Muffin mix, if you prefer something like that. Um, I, I don't even know. I think these may be very close to the same thing. I'm not sure. Um, my wife uses this. But anyway, so... 
can make some biscuits. Speaking of biscuits, here's some that we picked up on sale. Uh, red lobster is the same thing, really. And if you wanted to add some stuff like maybe some rice around me. Some southern salad. See where we're going here. Now we've got quite a bit for lunch. We just filled up on lunch. We were doing really good with our lunches. How about some rice? Some rice? Like, I don't know how many. I didn't wouldn't count them, but there's seven. Now let's move on to some dinners. And the protein is where a lot of people get hung up at, including myself in the beginning. This is where it starts to get a little more expensive, but it's also a little bit more confusing because a lot of us eat fresh, right? So we're not used to the canned stuff or the stuff in a jar, dehydrated and all that kind of stuff. So here's four cans, can each or maybe two. So this, this could be, you know, week one, one can each, week two. Just saying there's four in this container. So this is Sunday for week one and week two. Again, spam, week one, week two. A lot of people don't like spam. I don't know why I love it, but I grew up with it. Again, if it's not... not uh, something that you would eat, just just substitute it with something you will. A couple cans of cooked ham. Week one, two. Week one and two. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Week one and two. Wednesday. Hey, let's do some more beef stew. There's five days. Oh, we did chicken. Let's do some beef. This Keystone. It's good. This is good. This is good food. Keystone is probably the best canned meat that I've ever tried. And I've tried a bunch of them. So I recommend Keystone if you if you can get it. It's really hard to get right now. So as soon as you see it, grab some if you can afford it. Can't go wrong with it. Again, it's last forever or in, in, indefinitely, according to the government, as long as the cans are intact. But look what the best buy date is on there, if you can see it. I can't see your angle, so... Yeah, September of 2025. So already we're on a good, you know, good footing right there. So there's a protein for two weeks for two people. That's all that is. Wasn't complicated. Uh, we could do all kinds of varieties with that, right? I would recommend that you stick with the smaller cans. I, I think I showed you the uh, big old can of tuna. That's probably not a good option unless you have a large family or you're feeding the neighborhood. The same with these big bags of tuna that I just bought because I thought they were really cool. They were in Mylar bags. I think I bought these from Costco or BJ's, one of those places, but I just grabbed a couple. Um, this would be maybe good for a lunch if you like the spreads, roast beef. chicken spread. Those are just some options. Here's some shredded dried pork. It's okay. I mean, that's just about it. It's just okay, really. Not beyond that. Um, if you have a large family, and instead of getting something like the, you know, the chicken breast up there on the, on the left, maybe you want to have a, bone, a whole chicken in a can. This is a little pricey. I don't recall what it cost, but you have a handful of these, but that might be an option. Otherwise, I wouldn't focus on this. For 
my wife and I, this wouldn't be ideal because we're not going to eat all this in a day and without refrigeration, we're going to waste some of it. Most of it, actually. Another option, if you went and bought the ground beef, which we don't have up there, but right here the, the Keystone ground beef, or you canned your own eventually, this is just a hint, it opens up a whole new world when you start canning, but ground beef, spaghetti sauce, some noodles, got a big old nice meal right there, add some spices and you're golden, if you like mushrooms, whatever, just buy a little jar of mushrooms. Alright, some other uh, meat and protein options. I don't like this. My dog loves it. But uh, corned beef. I like corned beef hash and that type of thing, but I just don't care for that. But Some mackerel. Maybe you like mackerel. I'm just giving you some more options. This isn't part of the, uh, the what we're going to store for this exercise. I just want to give you some options. Uh, some different tuna, maybe you like tuna, water, oil, whatever you prefer. We like it in oil, I mean, in water, I mean. Here's some more clams, chopped clams, minced clams, crab meat, shrimp. A lot of seafood options in cans. Smoked ham. Some red, red, uh, red, what does that say? Red sockeye salmon, but some salmon. Um, some more salmon, salmon fillet, and some sardines. It's King Oscar and polar. Here we just have some fish steaks and soybean oil with hot chilies, hot green chilies. I put this next here instead of the date because there's a little dent in the can so that's the next can so whenever I find a dented can we don't put that for that's that's what we use next that's not going into storage or on, you know on our prepper pantry here's some sardines and oil Let's see different options in water water and mustard and oil. And I won't I won't take all day long showing you different uh, protein options. I just want to. A lot of people are stuck or confused about the protein, so that's why I spend so much time on it. It's some big old thing of cans. It's not of clams. Uh, this isn't very expensive at all. So there's a, a bunch of options. For your meat unless you're a uh, vegetarian or uh, uh, vegan or something like that and then I'm sure you're already aware what you can do as far as replacements that's out of my expertise so I'm not going to try to feed you just a can of meat for dinner I mean what kind of host would I be so let's let's fix up our dinners again Breakfasts, lunches, and we're working on our dinners. There's seven days of the meat for two people. Let's add some side dishes. I already showed some of this, but we eat a lot of it. Dirty rice. Suddenly salad. Stores well. Good shelf life. No refrigeration required. Simple to make. A little Fredo. Some more pasta sides. Lots of potatoes, okay? We're not on low carb right now because we're just trying to survive, right? Steak. Some 
butter garlic rice. Uncle Ben's is cool. Again, this is often on sale at Meyer. If you have one in your area, 10 for 10, get the 11 for free, different varieties. So very simple. Maybe you have microwave, maybe you don't, but you can put that in the pan. Um, rice cauliflower, if you insist on being low carb. And your SHTF event. Again, I wouldn't buy this stuff unless you're using it. Maybe you are low carb and you want to focus on that. I don't mean to be make light of that, but we're also using the same food. This isn't just for an emergency. Okay, now we have breakfast, lunch, two people, two weeks, protein for dinner or supper, depending on what part of the country or world you're in, and some side dishes. I want some vegetables. Want some vegetables? Vegetables are really easy and very inexpensive. Canned vegetables. Or mixed vegetables, I mean. How about some mixed green beans? I, I kind of like these. Some lima beans. I like them. My wife ain't crazy about them. But I can make those, I can make those to where she does like them. Sliced beets. Canned some of these this year. Wow, I grew them in my garden and canned them. I'm so happy with that. What, you want to see it? Oh, wow, really? We're in the middle of a video. All right, if you insist. Look at that, it's so sweet. Look how good that looks. All right, some, some canned veg, uh, I mean potatoes. Not very low carb friendly, but plenty of calories there. I may or may not have grown my own this year and canned them. Hmm? Not part of the video, just a side note. How about some peas? Let's do some green beans, some more green beans. This time we go with the French style. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven days times two. Two weeks, two weeks of vegetables for two people. So now you can see that entire shelf is for dinner and we're doing well, right? So we've got a lot of food up there. If you want to be on the safe side, maybe you have some company over, maybe you were hungrier because you're out chopping wood and fighting off the uh, zombies and stuff. Let's add some, add some rice. Okay, there's another bag, a couple bags of rice go a long ways, some split peas, and some green split peas. This is a very inexpensive solution right here. Um, we really like these 15 bean soup and I've got some in home canned mixed with some pork that I've made these up, canned them with some, some pork and and bacon and that type of stuff and uh, they're in quart jars and when we're ready for dinner and we don't have a lot of time because we both work it's just you know pour a quart in a pan and we're good maybe we're into some lentils that right there is beyond two weeks we are way beyond two weeks now and we don't have a whole lot of money invested here so let's make that all look pretty if we can do it without busting a bag open that would be a fun video right there right. there no oh I got to get how's that looking get in there stay huh that's that's nice looking right that's a lot of food. Look at what we've done. In a short period of time, we've got two shelves, breakfast, lunch, and dinners. And uh, I feel like we want some dessert. And we're running out of room. Hey, you know what? Let's do dessert. So fruit cocktail or mixed fruit. There's, you can't go wrong with that. 
there's one. There's, so there's two weeks for the Sunday. How about some uh, uh, sliced peaches? Would you believe I canned peaches this year too? I'm not going to go over there and show it to you, but I did. I sure did. Pineapple slices. Bury my, I'm burying my meat here. So, I hate that I'm hiding that. It won't look as nice. Like cranberries, cranberry sauce. Here's some whole berry sauce. For week fours, the two, week four and week four, and then here's some jelly. How about some pear halves? You like pears, right? And then maybe some applesauce. There. Now we got meat, side, vegetables, and dessert for dinner. And we put all that on two shelves with the breakfast and the lunches. With lunches of soups and sides. Breakfast is whatever we decide to have. That's that's amazing, doesn't it? That, that looks good. It wasn't that difficult. We didn't spend a lot of money on there. There's a little bit. Especially with those, those keystones aren't cheap. But yeah, that's uh... Those are some easy, nice options. Alright, so now I want to start with a little bit of other things, right? Um, I don't think you can go wrong with peanut butter and jelly. I don't, you know, we can make our own bread or we can do, you know, with the uh, biscuits, but peanut butter and jelly is good to have. Plenty of protein and some peanut butter. So I'm just gonna toss this up here with the lunches. All right. Now we'll move on down to the bottom shelf for some options because I wanna save the bigger shelf for some cleaning supplies and that type of thing, some some supplies that we might. So for cooking, we're gonna need a couple of things. How about a milk replacement? Because some things require milk. There's no getting around it. So some dry milk. Some other milk options could be uh, just canned milk, right? Or boxed or whatever that is. Then we have some uh, evaporated milk. Oh, that's cheap. Get to that one. It's cheese time. Coconut milk. And uh, whatever this is, table. I think this is just creamer, so probably not. Um, we want to cook, so we're going to need some oil of whatever kind you use. Again, we're not going by health here. We're going by survival. I like coconut. Coconut oil. Um, these, I, I'll go beyond the October on both of these, but it is time to use these. The oils, they will go rancid eventually. These are unopened, so in the seal. So this may last for years, I don't know. But I try not to let these get too old. It's just me personally. Oh, I'm putting those on the wrong shelf. Those go down here. So, some milk. Speaking of cheese, let's do the cheese since I brought it up. These are an expensive, very long term solution but uh augustine farms has a cheese blend powder um that's just one option but you can sure surely find something smaller and cheaper possibly just these uh uh processed cheese a can of cheese just for the, the the storage the stability of them for cooking i'm, I'm getting th these are things options for cooking some butter, sometimes you need that. Oxen Farms has the butter powder. A 
eggs for cooking. Alright, so you got some egg powder. You also can use egg replacement. So there's all kinds of options for, for cooking there. Some sweeteners, maybe you want some sweeteners. Um, this big bag of sugar, I put them in mylar. Uh, I, I hate, I store these in totes or those little tubs. Keep the, any kind of rodents and bugs out of them. But I hate that they, you know, the bags that they come in leave all the granules all over the place. So I, I put them in mylar. No oxygen absorber. We don't want to turn that into a brick. Here's some brown sugar. Um, I use stevia. My wife uses Splenda. So there we go. I forgot to mention some more breakfast options. Might be corned beef hash. Roast beef hash. Those are, there's some nice, uh, and, and that includes some protein in those. Don't forget the fruit, you know, canned fruit for breakfast. Some sausage gravy, it's got sausage in there. Uh, make the biscuits that I showed you, and sausage, uh, sausage and biscuits. Back to some more food options here. We want some salt. We probably want some pepper. Maybe you want both. If you're American, you might like some ketchup, some mustard, some hot sauce. Maybe some barbecue sauce. Good for cooking and spicing things up. Get some Worcestershire sauce. Some soy sauce. Yeah, I'm running out of room, ain't I? Maybe some ranch dressing or whatever you like. How many things can you call superfood and a forever food? Get yourself some honey. Maybe some Cajun seasoning if you like a little spice. I like a lot of spice, so this is my favorite. Slap your mama. I just love this stuff. It's actually on our kitchen table, and I buy these two or three at a time. And I put it on a lot of food. Vitamins. I recommend keeping vitamins. It's up to you. But uh, I think vitamins are important. There's men and women. The last thing I want to bring up is can opener. We keep a handful of these all the time. It says do not touch. It says we're in an emergency and we got a couple of them in the kitchen. Manual and electric. But Got a lot of cans here and if you do lose your power even though that's not necessarily what we're prepping for because we're prepping for an emergency maybe we have power maybe we don't maybe we have water maybe we don't just don't know because it hasn't happened yet right maybe we just lost our job and we need some help getting you know for the next couple of weeks until we can get back on our feet or maybe we get quarantined again for whatever reason and we all we can't get to the store or maybe the stores just start running out of food or closing on weird hours and stuff again we're not going to have to deal with that but we do want something just in case there's no electricity to open these cans of food all right water i've got a lot of uh a lot of water there don't i it's actually not that was a trick question. So we've got four cases, no, five cases of bottled water, um, which is probably too much because we want to rotate that water. Though at the top ones you see the ice mountain, that's what we generally um, keep in the car. So I keep a case of water in all of our cars. We have three vehicles. And for most of them, I, I, for the most part, I just keep it on the floor, floorboard of the back seat keep it in there four five six months and then I take it out and bring it in the house and we'll use it that's why that's here and then I'll replace that but I like those larger bottles because they're heavy duty they're thicker here's one here they last a little longer and they don't 
break down as fast as like say that Meyer brand which is really thin and uh let's see if I got one of those uh, here's one right here this this uh, this is really cheap even the tops are really thin so this this will break down so if I just left those there for a year or something eventually I'm going to come back and find a wet carpet because these will break down and begin to leak so if you can rotate that amount of water that's fine other options are refilling containers those juice bottles um, a lot of a lot of uh, I've seen a couple of people tell you that this is like a reservoir for uh, bacteria or something uh, I'm not totally sold on that concept because I've been using those for years I've never gotten sick of from drinking them uh, we take them camping with us like that but Whatever, what I do is I rinse them off, rinse them out, then I wash them really well, then we rinse it, and then rinse it again, I fill it with tap water. I don't put any bleach in there, but, you know, you know, drop a bleach or anything like that, but if that makes you feel better, go ahead and do it. I'm not an expert at any of this. But, this is also good for bathing, cooking, cleaning, that type of stuff. So you need water for more than just drinking. So in a, you know, personally, I might drink the bottled water. Again, there's videos out there of how bad bottled water is for you. I'm, we're just trying to survive here, so I'm not going to go into all of that. I would probably drink the bottled water for, you know, meals and use the rest of it for cooking, cleaning, bathing, that type of thing. Um, the government says you need at least a gallon per person per day. Personally, I think you need way more than that. But that's just my opinion. Um, we we store water in bulk, 55 gallon drums, uh, five gallon uh, containers. We have water all over the place. We take it from uh, roof catchment and all that. But again, we're just dealing with a two week supply right for for this video here. We'll get into that on another video. Um, they're not all created equal. Here's Meyer. I mean, no. What is the Kirkland? I think that's Costco. Is that? Or, or Sam's Club. I don't remember. And then Aquafina. This is a local company here, but a um, little thicker bottles than those Meyer. So it'll probably last a little longer. Another option if you drink this poison and we don't, just fill up these two liter bottles. Again, just rinse them out, wash them real good, rinse them, rinse them again, fill it with water, cap it up, should be good. Um, if you if you worry about bacteria growing in here for whatever reason, I don't think that's a, a, a danger myself, but again, I'm not an expert, just filter it, because you should have water filters as well. If you want a cheap option for filtering water, we use the zero pitcher and we have one of these in the refrigerator this is a this is just a shtf backup is all this is and i have a bunch of extra filters for it and uh, we have one in the refrigerator right now that we use daily uh, i'm a big believer in it it's not a big berkey but it's not too far from it as far as, as how well it it filters and it's way cheaper like way way cheaper so that might be an option. You can get some uh, water purification tablets for more water. You can get these bleach tablets, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to probably hurt yourself. One more last thing on the water. I don't know about you, but I would get tired of drinking just water every day for a couple of weeks. So... Um, one option might be this Kool-Aid, especially if you have kids. This makes, it says, 8 quarts. Um, I don't know if that's sugar-free or not. My wife and I like the Crystal Light. So here I got from Fruit Punch and some cherry. This is the one I like the best, is cherry pomegranate. But for some reason I keep finding this Fruit Punch is all they got. Some 
more fruit punch and lemonade for the crystal light. Just, um, those fill up, uh, those are the large ones for pitchers, and these are good for a bottle of water. So, one packet, sugar free, dump it in your water, and it sweetens your water up, it flavors your water up without sugar. And that's all I'll go into the water, but and we have food and water. Let's get into some supplies. Okay, so now we're going to get into the supplies. We're good on food and water, and um, I'm not going to be able to cover everything that you need for a two-week period. Obviously, I'm just going to throw some things out here to get you thinking and give you some options. And I do want to stress again, we don't know what the SHTF event is. Maybe we have electricity, maybe we don't. Maybe we have water, maybe we don't. I hear people say, and I'm prepping for this or that, you know, financial collapse and EMP, blah, blah, blah. We don't know. So I think the worst thing you can do is just pick one and, and uh, prepare for that. I would say find the most likely event and use that to, as a guide. Um, maybe your power's out for a couple of weeks. Maybe uh, you, know, you lose your job. Maybe somebody gets sick or hurt or there's a death in a family. There's a ton of things that can happen. And we don't want to overwhelm ourselves trying to prepare for an EMP right out the gate. Um, I'm, I've been prepping for years and years, and um, most of my prepper buddies have been prepping for years and years. And I don't know if any of us that are prepared for a total collapse of society, EMP, that type of thing. So, and honestly, I'm not even trying to do that. The likelihood is slim and none. And uh, yeah, so that's just my two cents. So I'm going to show you some supplies. Some of it's going to need water. Some of it's going to need electricity. Your appliances, that type of thing. But if we just assumed the worst and assume that there's no electricity and running water and stuff, and then we're quarantined for a couple of weeks, we lose our job, that type of thing, or we can't buy anything in the stores for a couple of weeks because, I don't know, maybe there's another scandemic or something. I mean, pandemic. Oh, I hope I didn't trigger anyone. And um, we didn't buy stuff like laundry detergent because we assumed we wouldn't have our... Uh, we, would, we assumed we wouldn't have our washing machine. Well, we'd kind of be messing ourselves up. Same with dishwasher thing. I don't have the dishwasher pods. I shouldn't have should have grabbed some out of the pantry but that's in a different room and we keep all this stuff separate from the pantry now but the um the idea here is, is to keep some supplies stocked up that's all that is probably want some uh, trash bags handy again maybe we got our refrigerators maybe we don't but if we do we want to be able to put some leftovers up again I'm, I'm assuming here we may have our refrigerators but when we're doing the food we don't want to we don't want to like fill our refrigerators and freezers up the power goes out we lose it all so that's that's the point and trying to prep you know start our prepper pantry with shelf stable foods maybe we want to bathe you know so how about some soap some shampoo. Maybe use bar soap. Some dial. My wife, she likes that dove. Some Ziploc bags are always handy. I wish that fit up there. That would be a nice spot for that. Probably want to do the dishes. We might want to wipe our butt. Maybe we don't have running water and we want some paper plates. Or maybe you're like me and my wife and we just don't like doing the dishes and we use them anyway. And I'm speaking of cleaning up some things that was very hard to get last year and even points this year I believe were some Lysol cleaning uh, disinfectants that type of thing so 
if you could get it now, probably would be a bad thing of having one or two of those around. If you really want to fit in, you probably want some hand sanitizer, some latex gloves. I, I love these, these gloves because cutting onions, garlic, especially some hot peppers, some jalapenos or something. Cutting pork, raw meat. Oh, you meant for the pandemic? Okay, yeah. And maybe you want some uh, useless masks. You know, so you can fit in and keep your Karens quiet. The last thing I think I'll add is some first aid. So this is a, there's almost nothing in here. This is just a, you can see we have, we have first aid kits all over the place. Every vehicle, every pack. A couple of large ones like this in the house, but this is just to represent first aid. Um, probably want to have first aid supplies. Oh, I forgot toothpaste. I just found that. So toothpaste, put that up here in case you want to brush your teeth. But speaking of the first aid, flu season's coming up, cold and flu. Maybe you want some of this. Maybe you have a teenager that really likes this. Uh, sorry, was that politically correct too? I'm sorry. I can't help it. This represents your prescriptions, your drugs, your supplements, your vitamins. Don't forget that. Maybe you can't get to the uh, pharmacy to refill your pills. Maybe you can't get anything on Amazon for your supplements. Maybe you don't have the money to do it. So that's something just not to forget. Supplements, vitamins, and your medications. And then we, of course, have our vitamins already taken care of. And I think that's about it. Let's see if we can get a big view of that. I don't know. So I can't without... I can't back up far enough. But So there's our water and our extras I guess condiments and stuff and then our supplies and our dinners our lunch and breakfasts so there we go it looks like a lot and it is it's two weeks more than two weeks I bet you if we if we ration that out and stretch it out I bet my wife and I could go way beyond a month on that Maybe not the water, but for the most part. Especially with those bags of beans and rice. Because those are huge food extenders. It's not easy. I'm not going to lie. It takes some effort. It takes some work. And it, it, it takes some dedication. But it's very doable. Very doable. And it's very important. That was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed it, and I, I hope it helped. Um, I do think it's important. Now, I've always said in the past, along with a bunch of other preppers, that if you just just add on to your grocery bill, you're, without, it doesn't even break the bank. It doesn't take a huge budget. If you're going to go shopping and you're on a tight budget, uh, grab a couple cans of this or that every time you go shopping. But in today's environment, I think we need to step it up a little but I don't think it's worth going in debt for right now. I mean, it's not like it's not like everything's certain, right? I'm amazed we've hung on this long. But I'm also not one of these guys saying the sky's falling. So I don't think we're in a situation right now to where I would say, run up your credit cards and go stock up on food. I don't think we're there yet. Or go take all your money out of the bank because, you know, it's going to close next week. I'm not one of those doomsayers, but I do think with what we've just gone through for the last over a year and a half now and what we've seen from our government and other governments in the world uh, and uh, big tech and, and corporate monsters and stuff, we, we need to prepare. Uh, we need to take care of ourselves, right? Because we've learned, if we haven't learned anything, we know that the government is not prepared to prepare. They're just incapable of it, even if they had the want and the need. They just don't. So, I think maybe it's time to step it up a little bit. 
again that doesn't mean panic that doesn't mean um run up a bunch of debt or you know you know spend your kids' college fund or anything like that or dig into your 401k don't do all that but take it serious step it up and start building it if you haven't started yet or if you have started it and you're just watching this because you think i'm attractive i completely understand that and i respect you for that but yeah don't waste don't 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 sit around and plan all day that was the point in this video here to help you plan um, I think it's important to plan it out because if you just start going and buying stuff all willy-nilly and everything, you have 15 items that you can't even make a meal with. So we want to be able to think meals and we want to think things that we we use. And subscribe to the channel, subscribe to my email list and the blog and all that. And we'll get into other things, you know, like... Maybe radios. Maybe you want to like have some type of communication, you know, know what's going on if everything really goes, you know, crazy or, you know, be able to charge things, you know, maybe you want some solar. We're going to get into all of that. But for right now, just focus on two weeks. That's all I ask. If you haven't prepared for anything and you, you have a week of food in your kitchen, add an additional two weeks now you got three weeks or whatever you know four weeks if you have two weeks already in your kitchen just just add two more weeks and we'll go from there and and once you see how easy that was and once you get a look at that and and, and understand the feelings kind of like when you go debt free i i spent years trying to get out of debt other than the house we made it and it's it's a huge relief right this the stress just falls off of you once you have that it's like being debt free you have food security and I don't have financial uh, security but I do have food security for a while it's not going to last forever yeah if a, a walking dead type of thing hit eventually that's going to go or if you know hordes of people come to your house and they're going to knock your door down and kill you and take your food yeah 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 whatever I like those dystopian books too but we're I'm trying to live the real life right now so that's what we're doing here, S preparing for whatever for ourselves and our family. I don't want to keep preaching, so I'll let that go. <sighs> but I did have fun with this. And I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell if you like, if you want to be notified if I have more, which I will have more. I have to put that in because my marketing buddies would like chew me out if I didn't. And, uh, but I, the biggest call to action that I can ask you right now is just get started. More than all the subscriptions and following me and all that stuff, I just really, really, really want you to get started. Start getting prepared for whatever. No, the sky's not falling. But I want you to feel what I feel when it comes to a little bit of food, uh, food security. All right, that's enough. I think I think we did all right. I don't want to drag it on. Brian Hawkins, Next Step Survival. We'll see you.